afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The arrival of fall means the start of a new school year. Fall also marks the start of a new year in the UVM Extension 4-H program. For generations, 4-H has provided young people with life and job skill development through hands-on learning by doing. Today's 4-H offers a host of opportunities that include leadership development and career building, as well as programs in science, technology, and engineering. To find out more, I'm joined by the State 4-H Program Director, Sarah Klein, of UVM Extension. Well, welcome, it's great to see you again. Thanks, it's great to be here. What do you want Vermonters to know about the start of a new year for 4-H? Well, um, we offer 4-H clubs uh, as well as a lot of other programs, and so this is mostly the start of the 4-H club year. 4-H, um, if people don't know, is a life and job skill development program, as you mentioned, and so it's time to start enrollment uh, to get youth ages 5 to 18 into our clubs and begin a year of exploration through projects. Um, typically, the 4-H projects that we offer are ones uh, that the youth are interested and learning about those projects, whether it's horses or cows, as most people think of when they think of 4-H, or it could be robotics and geospatial or mm -hmm. cooking, are the vehicles for learning uh, the life skills. And so um, not only do we offer the club projects, but we also have short-term programs and longer-term programs that offer leadership opportunities uh, and some entry-level type programs to get people more familiar with what 4-H is about. Can you give us some examples <clears throat> of the entry-level programs that we're talking about? Sure. Um, one of our newer ones is what we call a 4-H Pumpkin Challenge. It's in its second year, and it's really a, a project where, uh, multi, where it can be multi-generational. It could be clubs or families that are growing pumpkins. They start in the spring. They're given uh, lar seeds to grow very large pumpkins, and they grow throughout the summertime, keeping records, keeping track of the growing opportunity. And then there's a weigh-in, which is actually coming up this, week, uh, this coming weekend. I think it's the 10th and 11th at tractor supply stores throughout the state uh, to see who ultimately has grown the largest pumpkin. And so it's a, it's a way for youth and families to um, learn through the growing season and figuring out how best to manage challenges like lack of rain or lots of rain as we had in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And again, keeping records and, and learning some of those life skills in a fun, competitive, yet easy atmosphere without sort of the pressure of a long-term club opportunity. Has it been popular? Uh, it has. Um, we had many hundreds of seeds out. So <laughs> I think in the end, it's a matter of who shows up to weigh their pumpkins and how successful they are. Um, but that's been great. And that's um, just one of the opportunities that we offer. Um, we're trying to grow the 4-H program, uh, whether we're growing confidence or leadership and provide different types of opportunities to reach a more diverse audience. Why is that diversity so important? I think it's important for two manners. Um, one, reaching uh, underserved and, and perhaps at-risk youth uh, and bringing in um, diversity in terms of, of racial diversity or, or different types of people is important because we're, we work in this global society today and Vermont is um, uh, relatively homogeneous and so we're trying to uh, ensure that our youth here have opportunities to work with others, learn about teamwork and, and experiencing um, opportunities uh, where they're working with people who are different from others as they set forth in their careers. Um, also providing opportunity of diversity of project areas is important because um, we want to provide our programs uh, to everybody. We know uh, research has told us that 4-H um, kids are, will have more leadership, they give back to communities, they tend to go to college more than youth and other programs. And so uh, having a diverse set of project areas like um, uh, some of the stuff that's in the STEM arena that people may not traditionally think of will reach those audiences. Can you give me an example? Sure. Um, one is the maker movement, which mm -hmm. is pretty big right now. Um, right. Some people will call it tinkering as well. <laughs> and so uh, that's an opportunity where kids, it's really very, it's varied. Um, you may be doing some toy hacking, as you see on the television, which is taking apart toys and uh, seeing how they fit together and, and trying to um, make them do different things. One of the projects that uh, is pretty popular is taking a Furby and <laughs> reprogramming it so it makes different <laughs> sounds and different types of movements. Um, but in general, learning how things uh, come apart, go back together again, how electronics works um, is really pretty unique. Um, in some cases, they'll do, uh, what do you call it, uh, clothing with blinking lights like our Christmas mm -hmm. sweaters. Um, and so that's another type of a maker movement. But it's really just Yankee ingenuity. I think the, the maker language is new, um, but it's figuring out how things work and how to improve upon it, which is what 4-H is all about. It's hands-on learning, trying to make the best better um, and improve upon that. So that's we're building the capacity with our staff, and in some areas we have some programmings going on in that. Are there other types category. of programming that you're doing that's new? 
Um, we are. We're really focusing a lot on career exploration right now. Um, even though 4-H is about uh, STEM and healthy living and citizenship, uh, we know that as kids uh, age out through our programs, um, what they've learned in 4-H often is that springboard uh, for their career choice and certainly their college choice. So we have had a, um, a new program this past summer with some funding that worked with New Hampshire and New York called the Tri-State Ag Tour mm -hmm. that exposed participants to careers in the ag arena, um, food systems in particular, uh, not only careers sort of off the farm, things that you may not normally think of, but also the skills and the type of uh, skills that you would need to have those types of careers. Which is interesting mm -hmm. because it, it combines not only some, some information from the farm, but also marketing right. in yep. a lot of ways. Absolutely, business planning, um, definitely things that you wouldn't normally think of. Well, Across the Fence caught up with some of the young people involved in that tri-state agricultural tour, and they told us about their experience. Touring around various businesses in Vermont and New Hampshire uh, that have agriculture uh, as a basis for what they do. Um, so we're learning about different careers um, that are available in the dairy industry. Trying to stay in dairy is always an important piece um, and there always seems to be opportunities um, for more people to get jobs in agriculture. So learning about some of those opportunities that are available to us. With my dad having his own farm, and I've kind of shadowed him a little bit uh, with his job now, um, I see how he interacts with the veterinarians and the nutritionists, and I get to see how all those pieces fit together um, in the whole realm of being on a farm and being a part of the dairy industry. When you think of Vermont, you think of the dairy farms and the rolling hills. So it's kind of, it's iconic a little bit. But for me, it's always been part of, it's my background. Um, I don't really feel I know much other than dairy, which kind of makes me want to stay in dairy and keep involved with that, because I love it so much. In the fall, I'm going to SUNY Delhi for veterinary science technology. Um, but we also have a small farm in New York, and I just don't want to focus on just animals or just the veterinary practice, um, but also on local communities and making sure that we can be self-sustainable and, and fund and, and really support our local farms and locally grown foods rather than buying things that have chemicals in the store and are injected and you know really staying healthy and supporting our local communities. Bulbs. My dad has had a really big influence on me. I, I really like raising our own beef cattle and I like to know where my food came from and we grow our own vegetables and I just really enjoy knowing where my food came from and knowing it's the best possible quality that it could be. So. One of the things that I've learned in 4-H is being able to speak publicly and communicate well with others, uh, presenting yourself well to others and, and being able to effectively do that well uh, as you enter into life. And it's not just about animals and the responsibility with animals, but about those life skills as well. Vermont and New Hampshire together, I feel are a little bit more advanced and find that supporting locally grown food and farmers is a little bit more important to them uh, than I found in my home community in upstate New York, uh, which I find very unfortunate, but I would hope and maybe hope to contribute uh, to expand New York and have more support for our local farmers and our local products. And I really found that Vermont is doing a really, really good job of promoting that themselves, the locally grown vegetables and, and supporting their local farmers. In this day and age, we can't keep accessing and, and overusing our resources because they're gonna run out. And we can't keep pumping our food with toxins and chemicals. And we need to be able to have locally grown foods to keep ourselves ha healthy and happy and to support everyone around us and be self-sufficient and not have to rely on that tractor trailer coming in you know every day to feed us we need to be able to do that ourselves
Well, I know who I'm voting for for president. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the studio with 4-H State Director Sarah Kleiman. Are there other career or business programs in 4-H today? There are. Um, there's a program called the Youth Ag IDA, an individual uh, development account, uh, which provides youth who already have an interest in ag, who have a potential career or, or uh, business path and it uh, walks them through a series of workshops to help ultimately develop a business plan and then launches them with a match savings account. So that's one opportunity. Uh, another is a natural resource management academy that helps um, provide youth with some ideas about careers in environmental stewardship, land use planning, um, things in the environmental world. Uh, and then we also have a newer program called TRI, TRI for the Environment, which is Teens Reaching Youth. Mm -hmm. And there are three um, ultimate opportunities. Uh, it's where we uh, train teens who then ultimately work with younger youth in the classroom, either on um, energy, alternative energy, waste uh, solutions, given some of the changes in the universal recycling law, and then a new opportunity that we're in the process of developing with um, food firms uh, and future food systems. Well, let's join Keith Silva and Rutland for a look at the 4-H TRI program. There's a science to getting students to settle down, and it has to do with, well, science. We are going to be making pinwheels and they're going to run around the room and uh, see which pinwheel moves the fastest. Paquette is a senior at Rutland High School. She and fellow seniors, Bailey Thompson, is it moving? and Courtney Bliss, take part in Teens Reaching Youth for the Environment, or TRI for short. It's a leadership program offered by the Vermont Energy Education Program and the University of Vermont Extension, 4-H. And you don't want to share the tennis balls. This is me teaching teachers here. You don't Earlier the this year, 12 tri teams from across Vermont took part in a two day training session. They were taught the ins and outs of the science behind renewable energy. They also received instruction in how to teach. The goal of tri is to foster leadership by having older students teach younger students. We um, went through each lesson individually and we like took notes and we just got to know like what actually needs to be done and then I liked how we were able to bring that into the classroom and put our own spin on it. Yeah. Hands on is just a better way of learning. You actually get to experience it firsthand and I learn better that way. Um, I think the kids really enjoy it as well. They like you know getting up, moving around, playing, that kind of thing. They fully enjoy all the activities that we do. They love getting up and moving around and just experiencing everything. And they love that we're here and helping them. And just to see their smiles on their face makes my day so much better. I really like spending time with kids. Every kid has their own personality. And able to connect all of those and get them to work together towards like a common goal is really rewarding. When if I can make a change or like make a difference and help them like things that I like or make a connection with them, then perfect, whatever I can do to help the kids. I'm going to UVM in the fall for nursing and hopefully pursuing a pediatric nursing degree and I want to take away that I can talk to little kids and help them and not only with the environment but also in the career I'm pursuing. 4-H has helped me become more involved in my community and given me leadership qualities that I did not have before and it's just given me a way to get involved with things I've never had a chance to do. My family had been involved with 4-H, but I had opted out as a kid and I wish I hadn't. You get to be part of your community, you get to help educate younger children so that they can help the community in the future. And it's a great experience. I mean, I've learned so much from the kids and um, I've gained a lot of leadership skills that I didn't have before. This is great comments from those kids. Definitely. Now you've been working hard to attract new audiences while continuing with 4-H's traditional clubs. We have. Um, the clubs are really our bread and butter. I mean, all across the state, we reach about 6,000 youth in Vermont through all of our programming programs. Um, but it's that club environment uh, where you have the relationships between the older kids and the younger kids. You saw in that clip just mm -hmm. now how much um, the younger youth really look up and, and will listen to the older teens. And in our club environment, um, that happens all the time. And so it gives the younger youth something to aspire to, to see the olders as a role model. Uh, you have the relationship building, that sense of belonging to the 
club. Even with the teens reaching youth, there's still that cohort of the teens who are working together. And so it's those types of opportunities um, that really work to develop the life skills, as well as the job skills and the contents. But it's that sense of belonging, I think, and, and the relationships with our volunteers who we couldn't do this without that's super important. So how can Vermont families get more information about 4-H and how can they sign up? They can go to our website at uvm.edu slash extension. They can also call our phone number 800-571-0668 and uh, inquire about 4-H and find our enrollment forms. All right, well I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.